Who's winning a two aside? Who's, who's winning a 2v2? Maradona and Messi versus Ronaldinho and R9 in a little 2v2 futsal arena. R, R9 and... No, Messi and Maradona. Right you said Ronaldinho and Neymar? No, Ronaldinho and R9 versus ne- Maradona and Messi in a 2v2 futsal game. Messi and Maradona are just fake though when it comes to like the little touches, man. Honestly. And then like they're so small and compact too. I think because them two are bigger, they'll win. Because they still got the feet. Yeah, the... they still got the feet but then like they got the burst. Yeah, but Maradona's like a fucking pit bull, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... I don't know, you know. And they're born... I feel like they're more born for this. You know what I mean? They're more I don't born know. for the futsal I, I don't team. Know no, if, for the futsal team. I don't know if I agree with that. Messi and, 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 and Maradona on... Maradona, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Speak. Now you're good. <laughs> so I might just leave that in the episode. I'll be real. Huh? I might just leave that in the episode. Guys, <laughs> that's how we're starting the eye test now, man. <laughs> oh, that was the episode started, yeah? Oh, you want to start it like this? <laughs> oh, shame, man. Why not, man? All right, now the lights are good anyway, so now we can definitely start. Guys, welcome back to the eye test. It's your boy, Lies. My boy culture cams mm. back from holiday finally bro thank you for joining us man i think you forgot what your job was and yeah. you chose the worst week of all time to go on holiday i know but i'm a tiktok superstar now <laughs> you know what i mean follow me on tiktok be i'm a tiktok <laughs> sensation now so everything happens for a reason yeah. everything when, when, when's a reason. the tiktok on uh storage Club coming out though it's coming out um yeah, yeah, yeah. i think on saturday actually yeah, it's Ballon Do you know door I mean? 94 you're gonna talk yeah, about I mean, that right this is where i'm wearing um this brazil top i know yeah. it's r9 this but i wanted to talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. Zico. Oh. 1970. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That, was it 19? No, 1982, Not, yeah, sorry. 1982, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the best teams to never win the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, no, But do you actually, I don't know if that's a myth, bro, I'll be real, mm. because that France team with Platini those days. Were you there? Yeah, I was there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I remember yeah, yeah, when yeah. Zico, yep, yep, yep. one thing about him is his free kick taking. Yeah, crazy. I mean, I remember walking into that tournament, mm. everybody was talking about, it's, it's Zico's yeah, time, yeah. do you know what I mean? But, I guess it's just it wasn't, man. People, Michel Platini, all yeah, these yeah, men yeah. were there as well. Al- so. Algeria as well, too. That, mm. that World Cup, they had a huge shock against Germany. I remember mm. I was there. In the, in and, the, and yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, and it's crazy because everything yeah. is like timing because yeah. the next tournament was Maradona's tournament. Yeah. And really, that then that became yeah, yeah, the yeah. end of Zico's thing. Yeah, Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, when, when the hand of ball happened, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when the hand of God happened, yeah, yeah. I remember everybody. Yeah, what, was, was, what was everyone saying those days? Bro, yeah. we were distraught. Yeah. Bro. We were distraught on literally like it was one of the biggest robberies. Do you remember ever. what his GA was that season? I think he got um I think he got 13 goals, 22 assists. Ah, so that's, kind yeah. of that's good. good. No, for a midfielder, bro. Yeah, Back in the yeah. day, I remember people would have said that's a great campaign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Aye, <laughs> y'all had your fun. We're having our fun too, man. <laughs> Where do you want to start with this one? I want to make this one a whole episode because obviously we can only put this one out. I want to try and put it out Thursday, today. Yeah. I want to start with the Ballon d'Or. Yes. Because we had this whole week, we were talking about Vinny. We did a whole, Bro, we won it episode. Well, that, that's really the controversy, right? Like, I remember when in the morning it kind of got announced that Roger was going to win. I didn't believe it for the longest. And then when it actually got announced, it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. I was shocked. And shocked for a different reason to you because i think we shared different views on this in terms of like did he deserve it or whatever i didn't really have a huge issue with him winning it but i was shocked because everybody thought it was going to be Vinny. every reporter had announced it was going to be Vinny. Vinny probably thought it was going to be Vinny. madrid like where did this come from mm. for me to, even now i've seen him lift the award i've seen him give his speech it's still like almost seems fake to mm. me bro like in this instance, because a lot of it afterwards, like, I don't know, everybody's had their discussions about the Ballon d'Or. We're mm-hmm. not trying to have, we're trying to have a discussion around it, right? Everyone's had discussion about, do you think robbed or not? We did a whole episode, go back. I think mm-hmm. Vinny should have won it. Simple. You know what I mean? So I'm not really going to go too much into that. I actually want to talk about the aftermath of it. And I actually stand with Real Madrid. Really? And yeah, I stand with Real Madrid. A lot of people don't, and they're like, they're, classes entitled Real Madrid are definitely entitled that's one thing they, they, they've got the arrogance of the biggest club yeah. in the world but let's talk about what you just said everybody thought Vinny was going to win it not just us as football fans who are not in the know reporters who are in the know and also the clubs Manchester City and Real Madrid according to reports now it was actually Manchester City who contacted Real Madrid four hours before to say hey it's actually roger we've been told roger is one so whatever confusion is going on we don't want you guys to 
for it to be a, a big facade, a facade oh, sorry. Yeah. So for big, big officials of Real Madrid, Florentino yeah. Perez, Ancelotti, legends, official big football clubs in Manchester City and Real Madrid to believe that Vinny is going to win until four hours before, I'm sorry, France football and UEFA, some foul play went on there, bro. Some foul play went on. There's no way two big clubs like this can be led on until four hours before to think one man's going to win it. Because that's why you're outraged, bro. Because you didn't think he was going to win. If you got to the Ballon d'Or ceremony, you hadn't heard anything. You heard Roger win it. Have your debates, people. But it's because walking up to it, it was basically like it's Vinny's award. They had done the leaks that they do every single year. It's Vinny's award. I think there's some foul play going on there. And I think that's why Real Madrid didn't turn up. Real Madrid ain't turning up because Vinny didn't win it. If they knew that Roger was going to win it, they will turn up. They want coach of the that, year, manager of the year. Sorry, is, um, yeah. coach of the year, club of the year. I just think they feel like foul play has gone on, bro. Because here's the thing. I, th I think who led them on? This is this is really the thing. The thing is the journalists led them on, right? If it is was, it? Well, could, yeah. Could, could, like, could, 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 could France football have... Push something well, out. That, that's an allegation. That, yeah, this is, conspiracy. This, this, yeah, but this raised. is where it's becoming a conspiracy yes, theory. Yes, it has I, to be raised. We, but me and you can only look at it in terms of face value. Where in terms did the of journalists get that from? But that's what. That's why for me they need to come under under Fed, scrutiny. Fed well, Fabrizio needs to come out because Fabrizio for me is the one that his last three months every time Vinny scores a goal, mm. you know how he does these days because transfer window he's busy. He's yeah, busy. Yeah, and I know he's your guy, so I ain't trying to put you in this. Yeah. You can put this on me now if you want. But you know, like when it's the transfer window, he's busy. He's doing transfers. When it's not, he needs to get his 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 his, mm. his numbers in. So what he'll do is whenever Vinny scores or whenever someone scores, he'll be like, "This guy scores." He signed a new. Or he's in the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's about to sign a new contract in a few days. Yeah. He, he makes it a two for one. But for Vinny, every time he scores or does something after the Dortmund game, it's like Vinny, amazing performance. In a few days, he expects to win the Ballon d'Or. Mm. Or in a few days, he has been told he will be lifting the Ballon d'Or in mm. Paris. Where is Where is Fabrizio Romano getting this information mm. from? Because really, if I was Vinny, I completely hear you. If I was Vinny, and every day I'm seeing my phone, yeah, yeah, Fabrizio Romano, every day he's saying I'm gonna win it. He he has sources that I'm going to win mm. it. I'd be getting my best suit. But I'd be telling all my boys, yo, come through to the ceremony. Yeah. I got you all front row. We got mm. an after party at my place after. Nike's going to be sponsoring yeah. it. A few hours before the award, you find out it's all a shame. But that's the thing though. Like, this is what I mean. When Messi won the Ballon d'Or and we knew that he won it before, or Benzema or whoever, right? I know this one's closer, right? But you were... The players are obviously told something officially. I doubt... Even with what you're saying, I doubt Vinny got his source because Fabrizio announced it. I doubt it. Bro. You think he was being I told think by he has people. been told by official people, you've won the Ballon d'Or. Bro, this is, we're talking about Florentino Perez. Come on, he's not a nobody in the game. They were told Vinny has won the Ballon d'Or. It's not like I came up to him and said, hey, yo, Perez. <laughs> this is a culture camp's it. promise. Yeah, it's a culture <laughs> camp's promise. Vinny's got it. Bro, he's obviously been told by somebody <laughs> official, bro, that you can trust. Real Madrid are there every single year. This has never happened. They're there every single year. They've obviously been told by somebody that you would expect to mm. trust. And then for France football to come out and be like, hey, nothing. We Nobody knows who's winning the Ballon d'Or. Like, you still don't, we still, we're still not, don't know until now. And obviously we all knew Roger was going to win it. So they're liars, bro. Yeah. They're liars. Yeah. So I think I, that's the only reason. Well, I'm I'm back in Rumsey because they haven't done this man. before. We need a communicado official. Uh, yeah, bro. they'd be doing that shit when the sun rises and sets. They give us a communicado official. Okay. This one, we need one. Like, why wouldn't they have done this when it was the peak of of Barcelona Real Madrid rivalry when Ronaldo and Thingy are, are neck and neck for every single award? Why wouldn't they have done this? Like, just be bitter. We ain't turned up to no messy ceremony. Ah, right, let's stay home, lads. They always turned up. Mm. There's obviously they've been led on in this instant. That's why I'm with them. That's what I'm with. I don't think Real Madrid would do that, bro. I need, I need, because as it stands, these are all allegations. I hear it. There's definitely yeah. the conspiracy when you explain it to me yeah. like that. I'm like, ah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> but <laughs> I still need, I still need to see, because like I, like I said, and most people kind of felt this way too. On face value, the mm -hmm. night of the award, you find out all of Real Madrid are boycotting the Ballon d'Or mm -hmm. because someone else is gonna win it. I can't lie. At the point, I was like, look, I, I would have voted for Vinny. Mm -hmm. He would have gotten my vote. But I didn't think it was that black and white in terms of he had to win it and mm. nobody else. And then when I when I saw like the first two rows, Rod, uh, Jude and, and Vinny aren't there. Mm. Rodri wins the award. Like it just felt almost like embarrassing a little for Rodri. Like mm. whether you guys like or dislike Rodri, still 
it's not like for me he was an undeserving like he's is he for me he he warrants being a player of that kind of caliber and i felt like at that point he almost, he probably felt himself a little embarrassed yeah, like yeah, damn yeah. the the whole crowd is chanting vinny 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 when they're about to read it mm. he gets up there's some people shocked in the crowd people have filmed their reactions and then he's got to be there while the other two guys didn't even show up you know what a lot of people are talking about as well is the real madrid lot the real madrid side of things yeah but where the hell were the city players diaz was there diaz was there um Howland didn't go. Howland. Rodri's ha- about to win a Ballon d'Or. Why is not? Why is the whole squad not there, bro? I mean, you know what it was? It was probably again last minute, and more guys probably planned. Like Howland went to go watch like some Norwegian yeah, Mulder, team. I think. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, I'm going home, bro. Yeah, yeah. Nah, for real, for real. <laughs> I got like, put at home, bro. Yeah. Like I was surprised to see that because even at the after party, I saw a little after party thing, and I saw um diaz was there bernardo always seems to be around no bernardo it was a different there. that's an old video that's from last so year bernardo, yeah, yeah. Wasn't, bernardo there. wasn't there i feel like pep weren't like, pep weren't there the when they just looked like diaz was there and um checky yeah and that's because diaz was nominated for the like he was oh, nominated yeah. anybody else from city was nominated Haaland was the only one. Yeah. Oh, no Foden wasn't there either Foden, nobody I don't, I don't know. believed in him, bro. Bro, that's what I'm saying, bro. I'm sure Rodri probably thought he's not winning it. Rodri just came with his missus. Yes, bro. bro, bro no, did you see the way he pulled up on crutches? Yeah, bro. He probably wasn't going to show up. And then, like, yo, get your damn suit. Get your best suit. <laughs> get your ass on that plane. Bro, bro it's I insane. I thought they were going to roll him out on a wheelchair, Literally, bro. Literally, bro. It's, honestly, it's insane. But, like, obviously, look, it's, it's all his way, isn't it? Like, congratulations to Rodri. I do, you know, he's not the one that said hey i have to win it yeah, you know yeah. i mean he, he didn't pull no strings yeah, yeah. so congratulations to him obviously it's been stained a bit a little bit it's a little bit at the kanye west like i'm gonna let you finish it feels like that but yeah. beyonce is that that that's basically like what it, it yeah, is yeah. you know what i'm trying to say where it's like okay taylor swift won but <laughs> we're talking about beyonce yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the same thing with the Vinny situation um what do you think about like all the posts that came out afterwards from players and also Vinny saying i'm gonna they, um, they, I'm gonna do this. T- they, I need to. What did he say? Something so like I'm gonna, 10 times, I'll do it ten ready. times over if I yeah. have to. They're not ready. I love that from Vinny, and for me that. Encaps- I saw people. You, you, you comment that, and everyone's onto you, innit? What happened? Because you start being Twitter. you fist over to Rodri, innit? <laughs> no, I, start- but no, I never. Saw, I've said from the very start, and I have tweets, yeah. I have videos. I've always said my vote would go to Vinny, mm. but I can, I, I wouldn't be upset if the other two guys won it because I think this is one of those Ballon d'Ors where I didn't see an above all ironclad mm. outstanding guy that had to, it's not like Benzema a few years ago or Me- for me, three guys could have won it. Mm. I had my pr- favorite. I think he would have edged it, but I'm not too upset. And people mm. are like, oh no, stay on that side. Mm. I'm like, I didn't have a side to begin yeah, with, bro. Like yeah, I'm just yeah. chilling. Um, I love that mentality from Vinny, honestly. And I think it encapsulates what I love about him in terms of his relentlessness, his his focus, his desire, his root, like in terms of nothing has been handed to him. He's had to work for everything. And this is just an, another instance where he feels hard done by, he yeah. hasn't been handed things, let's go again. I, I absolutely love that. From the rest of the footballing world, I think it's overdone now. I think mm-hmm. I think it's starting to get a little corny, personally. Like I'm seeing people act like, I, what was it, Lamina was saying, football is dead, I'm out of here. Okay. Mm. Oh no, Mario Lamina yeah, is out of yeah, here. Yeah. What? Yeah. Wolves is midfield. Come on, bro. Mm. Like Richarlison coming out, mm. like saying, like it's, it's just for me overdone. Like I, I get his teammates coming out for him as well too, because that's your when you're in a team, it's like you're going to war together. Right. These your brothers. You shared a dressing room with them. But then when I'm seeing the rest of the footballing world acting like someone's been shot or something yeah, like do you that, know what? I thought it was overdone. Like yeah. Vinny was a great, had a great season, and he could have. De- and you could definitely think mm. he was robbed of it. But it's not per se. He's not getting robbed by like McTominay. Yeah, like he yeah. got. He, Rodri won the award. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. You know what is? I, I'm telling you, it's all because of the the surrounding factors. It's all. It's all because it was basically confirmed that he's won it. That's the. I issue. think Vinny if, too as well. If, if, Vinny is very loved by yeah, footballers yeah, around the yeah, world. Yeah. Like he, he's loved by athletes yeah. around the world. I'm not bro. gonna lie. That's what I was gonna say. I feel like I'm seeing the people that want Vinny to win it. And the people that wanted Rodri to win it, you can see how much different views they have of football. You can see the people that wanted Vinny to win it. And even the way they're speaking, Clarence said, oh, Figo, Gull- Hullet, Benzema obviously is a teammate. But all yeah. these people that are speaking about it, right? You can see they're proper like footballers, footballers. Like they're f- they love that side of the game. Technical ability, excitement, wow, X Factor, all of that type of stuff. And you can see the people that wanted Rodri to win it are like, they want oh it's good that defender find like d- defenders need more 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 clout and the numbers and his impact on the game which is all true kind of things but you can see it's two different styles of viewing the game and i actually think rodri's style is more suited to what journal or journalists i think journalists look at the game a lot differently to how footballers look at the game i think if this was a, i think if this was a player's vote 
the players would have voted for for Vinny. I think so. I think yeah. journalists, same way in the NBA, bro. No disrespect to certain winners of, of the MVP in the M NBA, but sometimes I'm looking at I'm like, let's say for example, Jokic. Amazing. Not saying anything about him, but sometimes I'm like, is he really winning this because of PER and advanced analytics? I'm like, bro, I'm like, do you know? What I mean? Sometimes I'm like that. Like mm. when I see the NBA discourse about why, oh, the PER and the, and the plus win minus. Offensive and, reading. And <clears throat> I'm just like, oh, you guys are journos. But when you go to players, yeah. it's different. You can even say it again. You can say it in a greater For way. For me, the basketball and thing, look, the look, biggest look example LeBron, is Look at LeBron James. I was just saying, Kobe you. is the biggest example. LeBron James and Kobe. The players will be like, oh, Kobe. But I don't us, think LeBron's right. No, I think... I think a no, but it's the truth. No, no, but hold on. I'm not even, no, but I don't even think you should look at LeBron because even players love... Like, I'm talking like... And I see journalists comparing like Kobe to Tim Duncan or something. Like okay. That. that for me is the biggest one because I think that's a lot closer. Yes, LeBron yes, objectively yes, yes, yes. is a better player than Kobe. Yes, yeah, good but one. you look at Kobe when he gets compared to like the Larry yeah. Birds and the, the the Tim Duncans and stuff like that. And then it's like mm, his, his, his offensive rating. He's yeah. got the most misses in NBA history yeah. and his turnovers per... Yeah. per yeah, and yeah. it's something that you just feel like when they, the game is happening, nobody's talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what happened as well. Um, one thing I don't like is that I listen and anyone that's been watching my content, I'm not too sure how many eye test fans know about my content back in the day, but anyway, I've said for a long time, Ballon d'Or is dead, bro. I've said it for a while. This is before anyone thinks that it's because Messi won over Haaland and all that. No, before that, I just think that award is losing its value. I think it's losing its not value. It's losing its credibility. They're adding silly things in. I just seen the Croatian journalist said that he voted for Rodri because of the class and fair play side. I'm like, bro, what is going on? I'm seeing guys not even put Vinny in their top 10. Yeah. I'm just like, now this is getting absolutely out of hand. And also, like, I just think there's so much inconsistency in how they vote. This why, this why, I don't you know, like I, I used it. To, oh, dead I now. remember before the award got voted, I, I was telling you in the past, the reason the Ballon d'Or for me is starting to lose credibility is because year by year, the criteria changes. Like I always say, one year, a guy who won the World Cup, that'll be prioritized. The next year, someone will win a treble, but someone had better stats. And then the next year, someone will, have better, uh, someone will win the World Cup, but some, it, it's every year it changes. Like you can I find... would rather, UA, sorry, I would rather UA front France football just come out and every World Cup year say there's no Ballon d'Or winner only Ballon d'Or winner is who wins the World Cup. I'd rather them do that. If they were going to do that, I at least give me clear and concise for, for the information. Time, Just tell me, for the, for World Cup years, the World Cup years, the Ballon d'Or is going to the best player of the World Cup. 1,000%. No, but then you, I'd rather that. But then you look, so for the longest time, that was the case. R9 missed almost the entirety of the season yep. for Inter, but then balled out at the World Cup and he won the Ballon yep. d'Or. Stoichkov in 94. Cannavaro in 06. It's messy that broke that. Well, that's the thing. Messi broke that that stigma where he put up such crazy numbers yeah. that people said, mm, "Is a World Cup campaign more and impressive than something. what he did?" Yeah, they said no. Twenty fourteen, similar. They mm. said no. But then you get to twenty twenty three, and you got a guy who put up fifty goals mm. and won a treble, but a guy won the World Cup. And Messi again, it's Messi. I get it. Mm. But then all of a sudden, the World Cup meant more than fifty goals in the yeah, treble. Yeah. So it's 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 just a little confusing on what is viewed as the biggest priority. If you want to tell me, oh, no, nah, forget about that because it's messy, then what's important to you is individual player quality. But mm -hmm. then every single year, individual player quality should be the priority. Facts. But then for some people, trophies. And then some, for some people, just pure output. Yeah. doesn't matter what kind of trophies you get. And mm -hmm. I always used to say every year it changes. But then I looked at this year and forget about every year. Every player that they were ranking, mm -hmm. it was for a different priority. For the longest time, I was, I was looking at the list and I was like, okay, this guy's here for the Euros. This guy's here for the Euros. This guy's here for his international play. And then I got to Lautaro at seven, who had international play. He had trophies and he had output. But then he was below Haaland, who won less trophies and didn't even qualify for an international mm. trophy. And then Mbappe, who dropped the stinker at the Euros. Mm. So I was like, okay, so now we're taking away international play. Mm. But then right above them is Carvajal. Mm. Who, yeah, that, yeah. for me, is the biggest mind-blowing one of all. The fact that Carvajal is top four, and people are going to say, well, what, right backs can't mm. now win? No, no right no, backs no. of Carvajal's nature. No disrespect to Carvajal. Incredible longevity. He's a champion. <clears throat> but what are we doing here, guys? Yeah, Honestly, like, anybody really trying to, like, justify that Carvajal was the fourth best player on the planet mm. this season by any metric... That that's what's actually this is for me when people are saying Rodri's ruined the game yeah. or this is Carvajal being deemed the fourth best player in the yeah. world based on the Ballon d'Or has has blown my complete I, perception of the sport. I, but I fully agree. I think that's the amongst the whole list 
I think personally, that's the worst thing on the whole list. Seeing Carvajal in the top five. And I'm, and listen, no disrespect to Carvajal. Not at all. That's great. He's had a great career. He was, great. Career. He, was, yeah, he was very good last season. But now we're just basically saying if you just win a lot of trophies and that you automatically have to be Bro, in that. Think about how People many players for Real Madrid were more important. To, the cross was the yeah. heartbeat of that Real Madrid team. He finished ninth. Bro, Rodrigo didn't even make, didn't even yeah. qualify for the award. He didn't get nominated. And you look is, at Rudiger. Who, Rudiger finished 22nd. Mm. Carvajal finished 4th. Yeah. You're telling me Rod, Carvajal was that much more important yeah. and his Euros was that much better. He finished almost 20 places ahead yeah. of Rudiger. And the thing is, look, that's just it's just like... You can't sit there and be like outraged that Jorginho no. finished on the on the on the podium. You can't be outraged that um, Manuel Neuer did yeah. that time. You can't be outraged that um, what's his name, Rodri has won it. Yeah. If you're gonna be calm with Carvajal, all these players have more in influence on their team they than did, Carvajal by, does, by far. And the thing is, Carvajal is a good player, but bro, I'm sorry, like. What? Let's start giving Ballon d'Ors to Michel Sargado. Let's start giving Ballon d'Ors to Gary Neville. Let's start giving... Like, it's, it's getting out of hand. Yeah. When we won the treble, but should Gary Neville have started sitting on the podium? Nearly on the podium. Like, I'm sorry. It, 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 that, was, that was ridiculous. I mean, Carvajal, that, yeah. legend of Real Madrid, great servant. But what happened to just saying, hey, Carvajal, here's your UA for best defender of the year. Cheers, mate. There's no reason for you to be sitting... Amongst the five best players in the world, that's that's that is bizarre. What happens? Just put in respect on your position, defender of the year. Here you go, Carvajal, for your great year. Thank you very much. (laughs) But you know what it is, bro. Ballon d'Or. Carvajal is is, people were because this is where it became a case of like, oh, was Rodri the best player at the Prem? No, was he the best? They, they, that, that's what was Vinny the best player mm. but then I thought about it with Carvajal what was he the Carvajal best? wasn't the best player the defender at the Champions League for me that was Rudiger Rudiger mm. was Real Madrid's best defender mm. last, last term and I look at the Euros was he even in the top five most important Spain players no. was he the best defender at the Euros Carvajal not for me. Not even close for... Yeah. You could argue Kukare had a better yeah. throw than Carvajal, bro. Eight, bro. Like, he was good. He was nothing to write home about, mm. bro. Come on. Like, this is where for me... And it's when you start doing the whole... Because you start looking at it and you're like, okay, Real Madrid won the league and the Champions League and then Spain won the Euros. <laughs> and you think, who's a, com- com- a, a common denominator, yeah. a common um, factor there? Oh, it's Carvajal. Then that's when you start doing his importance to the team. It's just so... De- like let's let's have let's have it right, mate. That was the that was for and me. And look, the worst one thing, thing I haven't liked coming out of this argument or out of this Ballon d'Or is like this the football snobbery around positions because I think some people are taking it too far. But I'm sorry, not when it comes to damn right backs. Who's like it's it, it's not even like for me. And I'm sounding like a Carvalho hater. I promise you, I'm not. I have nothing against yeah. the guy. I do not think about him one single yeah. second of my day. There's no agenda here. Yeah. But he's not like a Philip Lam. He's not like a Marcelo. He's not like a Cafu. He's Danny Carvajal, bro. Like Even it's, like a it's Trent he's not a, like a a, a, a match winning mm. right back on either side of the ball. He's just a very reliable yeah, guy. He's a steady Gary Neville, Marshall Sargado, um, Juan Fran, um, <laughs> flipping. Who else is the other one? Um, who else? Juan Fran. Who else? Aspi Cueta. Yeah. There's those are yeah. those are them more steady it's, Eddie's. Who's the guy? Lich <laughs> bro. Lich Stein. <laughs> Steady, even he had a bit of something by him. But steady, steady Eddie. It's in that goal that Pogba played him over the yeah, top. Yeah. Carvalho could never. Bro, steady Eddie, thank you for your service type fullbacks. Like, it's uh, honestly, it's ridiculous, bro. Like, yeah, bro, bro, listen, it sets a precedent now, isn't it? Like, that's how you're going to start getting Ben White. But that's why for me now, you, you said a while ago I stopped taking the Ballon d'Or series. This for me was the, the, the year. That genuinely go, going forward, and again, it has nothing to do with my guy didn't win it, or but I've seen Messi win eight awards. Mm. So if anything, I should love the Ballon d'Or. Mm. But this is the year, honestly. I've looked at it and I'm like, but also nah, I, I, for me, I can't bring myself to get angry anymore because yeah. what am I getting angry at? Journalists who can't follow a single single criteria from one player vote mm. to another. Another example I want to bring up, bro. Florian Verts was the best player in the Bundesliga. His team went undefeated in all mm. competitions until one final. He had an okay Euros for his standards. Danny Omo played 20 games in the Bundesliga mm-hmm. and came off the bench in almost every single Spain game, mm-hmm. but he was joint top scorer when they won. Omo finished one position behind Florian Verts. Mm-hmm. Another one for me is Foden, by the way. Huh? Foden. No, Fo- Foden was the best player in the Prem, or was deemed the best player in the Prem. Had a horrible Euros. This guy finished outside the top 10. Holland, who I don't think a single City fan alive would say last year was better than, than Foden. Mm. Finished six places above Foden. That was... that. I don't understand the Harlem placement. Bro. That one, Harlem placement was random. And what I was going to say is, yeah, this is why I said, I think I said it to you before. 
Can we stop Ballon d'Or 30, 20, 10? Bro, just show me the final three, bro. Show me the final three and let people vote for the three. Why people are splitting votes with Vinny for Carver Howe is ridiculous, bro. Or Ju That's how s these teammates are battling for the same position. See where I'm coming from? They're th for the same spot. Because... Carver Howe took, Carver Howe took oh, votes on Vinny. Votes. By the way. Carver Howe took votes bro, on I've Vinny. I've seen like three, four journalists have him second. He came fourth. He must have had a, yes, a lot of seconds, bro. bro. Just show us, the, for me, top three at max top five. I do not need to know who finished 10th in the Ballon d'Or. I'm sorry, I don't. I don't need to know who finished ninth. Who cares? Who cares, bro? I need it top five. All right, you're the best five in the world. Or top three and let the world decide from there. You guys can have your arguments before. Like, oh my God, how did, I don't know, say the top three was Vinny, Rodri, and Jude. You can pre have, we can all have our online debates. We can jump on yeah. ITS, we can do that. Let's have our debates about, oh my God, how did Carver how not make the top three? All right, sorry, mate, he didn't make it. Now let's get serious and let's have the three that are actually yeah. and in vote between them three. That, for me, is how the battle should be. Why is somebody, I'm seeing something, why are somebody putting, like, we know Mbappe wasn't going to win it last year. I saw somebody put Mbappe, like, third. Like, come on, like, you're wasting votes here. You know what I mean? I think you're wasting time here because you know he's not going to win it. You're just voting him because maybe you like him for the sake of it. Let's get serious. These are three serious candidates that have been put forward. Vote for the Ballon d'Or, bro. All of this voting man that finishing 10th are getting this spot. And, bro, you know he's not even going to finish in the top 20 and some people are probably voting for them. Yeah. Like, who was on who was on these lists? Martin Odegaard. I didn't even want to just draw him out. Martin Odegaard's 19th, yeah? yeah. He probably snuck some fifth place votes. Yeah, probably yeah. snuck some... Not for sure. Come on, bro. If you're not winning the Ballon d'Or, why are you people voting for him? Do you get what I mean? Why do it? Like, those are the stuff where I'm just like, yeah, I think they're just wasting time. I, I just think they're like, wasting yeah, time. Yeah. And lastly, you're talking about Florian Verts. How did how did Jabi Alonso not win Coach of the Year? Yeah, that was bewildering to me. But you know what it is? They favored the Champions League but until they came to voting for the Ballon d'Or, where they voted the Euros. So why did De La Fuente not win? <sighs> bro, apparently he was gonna win it anyway, and in the last second they said that Ancelotti's winning it. De La Fuente, bro. yeah, they bro. were trying to yo Madrid, please, please. come, yo. <laughs> We'll get, we'll chuck you guys a few of these, bro. Honestly, it's, it's, it's a mess. So wait, so who won UEFA Defender of the Year? Um, I don't know if it got awarded yet. I have UEFA no idea. Haven't... Oh, that's FIFA best, isn't it? No, wait, no. Now, UEFA who definitely won, has a UEFA Defender. No, they won the Champions I, hold League on, UEFA, Defender of the Year. I don't know if they still give those awards out, bro. Really? Yeah, UEFA Defender Award. UEFA Club Football Awards. Best Defender. I don't... No, they don't give those awards out anymore, bro. They haven't given it out since... No, surely they do because I swear. What the fuck? Nah, they don't. They don't give. Um, they don't do the thing. They don't do the defend, They don't do anymore. defender of the uh, defender of the year anymore. Really? Wait, wait, for club footballer of the year winners. What the? Fuck? Hold on. Like, they give know? the they give the Champions League player of the season now, and they give the yeah. Champions League young player of the season, but they don't give defender of the year anymore. They really? stopped. The Ruben Diaz is the last one to win it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But a defender should sit on the Ballon d'Or podium. You don't even value yeah. defenders. Vinicius won Champions League Player of the Year. You know, Rodri won he Champions was... League Player of the Year the year before. But Rodri was even nominated, was even in the team of the year this tournament. He wasn't in the team of the season. For Champions, for the Champions League. League. No. Because he, I, I wouldn't have put him there. No. But that's crazy. crazy that, yo, you could have made the case that Rodri deserved it more the year before than this year. I'll be so real. Champions League final goal as well. He too. did. Nations League. He, he won as did. well too for Spain. He did. He, he won scored the, the winner on the, the final. He, yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. he did. He did. They, they pushed Haaland more. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, bro, honestly, it is what it, Haaland must be looking at it like, I'm like, Rodri won the Ballon yeah, yeah, yeah. d'Or. The... Anyway, man, Haaland, let's have, Honestly, on, if man. anyone should be outraged, bro, it should be Haaland from the year before, man. Honestly, yeah. like, the fact that he didn't win a Ballon d'Or of that season. Yeah. He's but probably looking at Vinicius. Saw, he's probably, he's probably like, looking at Vinicius like, yo, hold that, bro. I'll be yeah. real. Like. That's why you saw <laughs> man like Ribéry coming out and speaking. Like yeah. he's probably thinking, hold on a second. Rodri won it after that. After I put yo, up. Run me mind, man. <laughs> nah, yo, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not surprised Schneider and these man didn't pop up, man. He probably will. Schneider, you know the Dutch. Schneider, allow that, bro. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. You <laughs> know the that. Dutch. Milito, like, you know the Dutch. put your credentials on the Milito table. Milito didn't even get top thirty. <laughs> yeah, man. Didn't even get top thirty. About, about Schneider. Yo, you know. Let me say this though, right? So. Because I don't want to drag this on too long. We obviously disagree in terms of was it a robbery. You very clearly think Vinny should have won it. Mm -hmm. I think Rodri was a capable winner. What I will say, though, 
the cringiest thing that I, I, I heard coming out of this award of social media in particular, because again, people in real life don't speak like this. Well, how should Vinny shouldn't feel that hard done by? He didn't get more GA than Matata, or he didn't get more GA than who were the other names that they were saying? Yeah, like, so he, Matata. He had like the 30th most GA in Europe. Guys, no Ballon d'Or has ever been. Journalists don't. You think journalists look at GA? They're looking at other cringe stuff, but they're not looking at how many assists this transfer yeah. market saying Vinicius got. Can I tell you guys this? I, I read this up yesterday. Kaka in 2007. Mm. You know how what, what placement of GA in all competitions he got in 2007? Oh, yeah. He wasn't in the top 20 of most GA mm. in, in Europe. In, in Europe's top five leagues. He wasn't in the top 20. Mm. Didn't win the league. But in the Champions League, had incredible performance. I don't even know. Did he go to the Copa America in 2007, Kaka? Yeah, they did. They did. No, did he go? I'm sure he did, yeah. I don't know if he went that year, bro. You Maybe sure? it was Ronaldinho who didn't. One of them didn't go. Maybe Kaka did go. I think Kaka did go. 2007. You know? I don't know if Kaka went in 2007, bro. I mean, let me find out real quick. They played thingy that year, no? Argentina, Argentina but I don't know if Kaka yeah, went. I'm sure Kaka Because I there. think Brazil sent their second team, bro. I think Kaka was there. He didn't go. He didn't go. He bowed out of the 2007 Copa America. Wow. Brazil won it without him. So he didn't do anything with Brazil that year. Didn't win the league. And he won the Champions League with the 20th most G- or 21st most GA in all competitions. And this is not me saying, oh, you should have given Dirk Kout, who finished with more yeah. GA that year. But guys... Is this really how we like consume football in 2024? Should, even, we, should, even, should Mateta have been on the Ballon d'Or top 30 because he had more GA than Vinny? Mm. There's a lot of guys who had more GA. None of them got nominated because we're not idiots. Like, mm. what, the, what the hell is going on here now that it's more important to get GA than it is to win and perform in the biggest games in football? Is, is that really now what our priority yeah, is? People how say, many oh, GA did game? they get? Or what did they do in the Champions League semifinal and final? I'm sorry, no one with a functioning brain and working society, they'll all laugh you out of a room if you say the first. Mm-hmm. Please, guys, like, we're, we're losing grasp of reality here, man. GA, GA, GA. Who cares? Mm. Who cares, honestly? It is what it is, man. That's just the way the game's gone. And I, uh, this discourse. I tell me, Ro- Rodri only had eight less GA than, yeah. than Vinicius. What the f- What does that mean, bro? It is what it is. Let's move on. Man. Oh, Fuck my God. Let's talk about United. And I can finally say this with a smile on my face. Let's talk about United, man. <laughs> hey, it's a good conversation now. I've talked a lot about Amarim. I've talked a lot about Ten Hag. I'm going to leave you to lead the floor on this one, Kim. First of all, what was your immediate reaction when Ten Hag got hey. fired? And second of all, how do you feel about the impending arrival of Ruben Amarim? Finally, it's happened, bro. You know what I mean? Finally, finally, finally it happened. I'm absolutely buzzing that Ten Hag's gone. That's just that goes without saying. I think that's a major thing for Man United. Every we should if 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 Amarim especially was going to be the one that we hired, we could have just done that in the summer, which is annoying. Because if it was like Nangles when we just hired, okay, maybe that apparently would they be met different. they met with Amarim apparently. Is it? Yeah, apparently they did meet with him. The Athletic Did's, was saying they they, there we they, go. they had so, conversations with him. Bit of a howler there. Yeah. Bit of a howler there. In yours have to be looked at there. Um, but listen, I always say learn from your mistakes. They very rapidly want to learn from this mistake in terms of um, they've done, they made the mistake. They've now sacked him. And instead of doing interim for the whole season, they're like, nah, there's still a season that could be salvaged here. 30 games left. There we go. So credit to them for that. Still don't, I still lost a little bit of ratings for them for how it happened. But again, you learn from mistakes, whatever. Now, Ineos have their structure. They've got the takeover tick structure tick they have their coach now tick only thing is we haven't got our their particular let's say their players or the manager hasn't got his players but you've got three ticks here now this is where the Ineos era has to start you you can get the blight that Ten Hag wasn't your man yeah, yeah. you wanted to maybe be calm with the fans uh sporting director joined in July okay blah 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 this is now where the Ineos it's era like clear, has to start. It's like Clear Lake when they had Tuchel coming, like when yes. they came in with Tuchel and they gave, yes. him a few, they gave him a few months and the first few games of the season. Yep. But everyone knew Graham Potter was their first manager. There we go. And that's when the Clear Lake era started. Whether it was good or bad, that's where the Clear Lake era started. So now this is where the Ineos era has properly started. Let's see what they can offer. Ruben Amarim now. I'm happy with the appointment. Um, now I've said I'm not doing no pre-manager gas no more. Ten Hag has scarred that shit, bro. Mm. I ain't doing that no more. Obviously, when Jose came, I was absolutely buzzing as well. LVG, I didn't really have an opinion. Oli, I wasn't really... I was like, okay, I think we forced that a little bit. 
But Ten Hag, I was like, we were this is we the were one. eating out of the palm of his Bro, hand. Bro, I was like, this is the one. Yes, this is the one, and this happened. So I'm not pre-gassing any managers. For me, every manager is guilty until proven innocent. Now, bro, you've got to prove yourself that you're not a, you're not a guilty party at this point because we 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 crown these people too early. I'm gonna re- give Amarim his time. I'm gonna give him till summer. See what he does in summer as well because these are not his players. What I want to see though, and I'm begging Ruben Amarim, please do not join this football club and start catering to these football players like. Oh, because these are my players, I'm going to play a 4-2-3-1 and I'm going to... No. Implement your style and let us know early who the hell can play your system and who can't. I don't want to walk into next season and then we're now trying to plug some guys in gaps and, they, and we're like, oh, he can't play this system. Well, we had all the last season to, to find that out. Come and play your 3-4-3. Three, three. Let's see who's, who can make fittest, it. Yeah. Survival the fittest. No time for favourites. Let's see what he can do. So I'm supporting him. I always say, I don't care about tactics. I don't care about, can you communicate? Because word to KB from our group chat, the best thing that he says is tactics can be studied by nerds. Communication can't. You have to be a leader of it's men. It's a human skill. It's a human skill. Apparently, Ruben Amri, as you said, is superpower. They said his superpower is not the 3-4-3. Three, three. His yep. superpower is his communication. It's communication. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. what I want, bro. Can you communicate efficiently? Can you get people to believe in you? Because if you can, that's honestly, that's 70% of the job. Just being able to be like, bro, I can have a tactics board. Yeah. The next man can have a tactics board. Who's is he going to, are they going to listen to more if we both had the same tactics board in front of them? They're going to listen to the one that can flip and communicate better, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. That can get into my mind better. Mm. That's all. So if Ruben Amram can do that, that is a start. So apparently he can. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm supporting him. Young manager. Head full of hair. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Like, yeah, let's go. Now I am, I am looking for the first time in a while. Looking forward to it in the first time in a while now. Actually listening to a Man United press conference. Yes. It's been ages, bro, since I did so. Me personally, my biggest issue of Ten Hag, yes, the communication was a bad thing. Like the fact that I didn't even want to listen to the guy speak. I couldn't even imagine if I was a player working with him every single day. Mm -hmm. However, my biggest issue was that like two, three years in, you still weren't able to see him like fully implement what he deemed to be an Eric Ten Hag style of play. And when I look around the league at how quickly Villa implemented Unai Emery's principles. Yeah. Brighton, no matter whether it was De Zerbi or now it's even this new guy, what's his name? Um, Herzler. Herzler. Like, you can see it's a Herzler. You can see what he wants to do. And with Spurs. Like, mm-hmm. I've always been of the belief it shouldn't take three years for a football team to, like, learn how to play your system. And especially in today's game. You see it now happen within games or within months. I think with Amarim, we're not going to have that same problem. And it's not because I've watched 50 Amarim games. It's not because I think he's like elite. Like, I don't know much about Amarim as a, a tactician. I know his resume and I, I've, I watched a few videos. I'm, I'm a casual if you want. Yeah. But when I look at the way he wants to play with a 3-4-3, I look at Tuchel when he came to Chelsea. I look at Conte when he came to, to Chelsea as well too. And I look at three back formations in general. I do feel like it's easier to kind of get your message across and get your team playing in the specific way you want Mm -hmm. when you're having that drastic of a formation change. Because then you can't like have the same principles that you wanted to counterattacking 4-3-3 and a 3-4-3. Like the way you want to build up, the shape of the the team, the positions you have to take, the fluidity, it's all unique to that kind of setup. It's very, it's it's, it's not like, oh, I... Our old coach used to play 4-3-3. Our yeah. new coach is coming like 4-2-3-1 or like maybe playing with a 10 instead of a 6. But a lot of it is still the same. We're still kind of like, it's muscle memory yes, from the past yes, guy. Yes. I feel like this three at the back, guys are going to have to relearn they are. The, 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 the way they want to play. They're going to have to relearn yeah. how they open, the, how they receive yeah. the ball. They're going to have to relearn how they defend areas, yeah. wide areas, when to step up, yeah. when the when the RCB yeah. or LCB step forward yeah. and then it ends up making a, a, yeah. a pivot. And that's not to say whether it's going to be, be successful for, I don't no. know if Emrim's going to be a successful manager or not, no. Manchester United. But I do think whether he's successful or not, we're going to see an Emrim team. Yeah, I, that and that was my biggest issue with Ten Hag. What is a Ten Hag team? Mm-hmm. I, I hope I'm not wrong here. I hope these don't, words don't score me. But I think we will see an Emrim team. It just remains to be seen. Tactically, can he match up to the yeah. best managers in the league? That's, and one that's thing it. is, guys, honestly, I don't understand the stigma behind three at the back. Why it's seen as a negative thing. 
three at the uh, uh, three at the back can actually be an offensive system. So I don't get why you know okay, people see it. Inzaghi, Inzaghi, Inzaghi you know, Alonso what I mean? plays three at the back. Bro, people forget. Yes, they they it's he's seen. Oh, thank you. There we go, Alonso. But yes, he's seen as a negative manager. But Conte's three at the back at Chelsea, bro. Them fullbacks were flying, bro. Alonso was flying. Victor Moses was not defending. He was flying forward. He was like Jeremy Frimpong. Mm-hmm. They were flying forward. So that formation can still be very offensive. It keeps you defensively compact. But again, it can be offensive. You're also, your centre-backs are also, in a way, midfielders as well. Because when they have the ball, they're going to step forward. Some are going to come across. That's just the way it is when you're in a back three. Mm. So it can be used. It depends on how the manager wants to use it. It shouldn't be seen purely as a negative thing. And the other thing is, um, it's going to be a big change for a lot of players. I'm looking at it now. Where does Bruno fit in that system? Because I'm looking at it for how he plays in uh, in sporting, the profiles. When I'm seeing Trincao and Marcus Edwards behind um, Gokeres. Yeah, but they got this guy, Pedro Gonzalez, who also plays as one of those tens. In okay, is he similar to Bruno? That, according to them, he is a bit similar. And okay. I look at the, the dual tens that he's yeah, playing. Yeah. Could I see a role in which Bruno mm. is, is, is implementing one yeah. of them? I could. Like, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at the usage because now it's, you're going to have to be covering large spaces as well. You're looking at Kobe. That's going to be interesting to see how he adapts to, to that in that pivot, who he's going to be playing next to. Is he going to use Ugarte in the Premier League? Don't think because he had Ugarte at Sporting. Ten Hag had Van der Beek and looked at him like he was a piece of trash, bro. You know what I mean? So he saw in this league now, nah, you ain't it. So we'll see with that. Lissandro Martinez, what, what, what's going to happen with him? I think he looks like he might probably be do the LCB, but you're going to be defending wide areas a lot more. I'm looking at um, just General Rashford. What is, is Rashford, he's not similar to Trincao. He's not, I'm sure he's not, after you just described this, dual 10s. Rashford's not a dual 10. Yeah. So that's going to be interested in his usage. There's going to be a lot of players that I'm interested to see. How is he going to use it? Could this spell the end of Luke Shaw? Luke Shaw, it should be the end of him anyway because of his injuries. But even when he's back, Luke Shaw's not really a left wing back flying forward like that. So, though. No, but really, he was, I think he was better. When, it's, when I've seen him play for Man United, and I think he's actually better as an LCB. Maybe you can cook him there, but back three, for me, he shouldn't even back, be in. The, like, bro, he's not even we haven't seen this guy yet, in fe- since February. To be bro. fair, yeah. So I you think- know the one that I'm honestly looking at, and I'm like, mm. hmm, is there some? Is there something there for you? Who? Anthony at wing back, bro. Left wing back, <laughs> left wing back, <laughs> low key. But Look, I don't rate Anthony. I haven't rated Anthony since the minute he stepped mm. at United. He's gonna want it. If it's about whether I, if I was a betting man, would I bet on Anthony being successful or not? I would probably lean towards no. But if there's any like remontada in his United career, if he just puts his head down and says, yo, allow this samba samba. I was mm. not making favela guys or whatever. Mm. I'm now a hard work, like Victor Moses. I'm a fucking Ashley Young. Bro, we might have something for you, bro. <laughs> we might have, we might have room for you over here, man. Let bygones be bygones. Yeah. I'm willing to let the past be the past. One thing I hope people know is that Portuguese people, Portuguese managers are pragmatic. They have a serious level of pragmatism in them. Yeah. So I hope people don't think that we're about to see 24-7 swash. But Amram is something that will let other teams have the ball, stay compact, and then win the game that way. So people need to expect that. I expect from Portuguese managers, I'm hoping... I'm thinking at least 30%, 40% will be pragmatism. 60%, okay, it'll be nice. It'll be passing out the back. It'll be luck. He has um, Diamandi. He has Anacio. He has players that like to get on the ball. So he's always going to be that way. But don't expect, like, you know, everyone in their mind just think football is Pep's way. Yeah. He's not no Pep people. Don't think just because he's young and do Pep you, started do you young. Need, do United no fans Pep. then need to swallow their no pride Pep. here when it comes to this? Because United fans in particular, they're one of those fan bases that when it comes to playing a certain style... It's not enough for them to win. They need mm-hmm. to win while it's attacking, mm-hmm. swashbuckling, high flying wingers. They're that kind. It's like Barcelona per se. Obviously, they have their own mm-hmm. kind of way of doing it. But I'll never forget when they were chanting attack, attack, mm-hmm. attack at LVG and then mm-hmm. at Jose and like even at Tenag. Like it's boring. So. Amram's team score goals. Yeah, you but is it mean? about goal scoring or is yeah. it about the way you're 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 you're, you're like um, United fans? We always hear it's the United way of yeah, playing. Yeah, Remember yeah. when 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 Rania came in and Ever was coming out saying, "Nah, this is not the United way of yeah, playing." Yeah, like, yeah. Do United fans need to allow this United at least at the very start in any ways and say, "Look, we just need to get back to a respectable level." You have to let the manager do his thing first. Yeah. No way should Man United ever not want attack. No way should we ever not expect to be entertained. 
and no way should we ever not expect goals 100 percent. but that doesn't have to come the way fergie did it i don't remember i might actually actually i do remember the busby babes, babes yeah, yeah i yeah. remember how we did it but it was a little bit different yeah, then yeah. do you know what i mean so with the busby babes and in fergie honestly you can't expect it to be that way fergie's way in all bands aside that might have been completely different to how busby did it right so when you're saying the united way you're saying the fergie way basically you can't necessarily how can i say expect that in this monday 24 7 you're gonna look at look at liverpool they've had different ways now they got on slot he's scoring goals they're winning games they're happy they're all, yeah, life's good life's good they just came from rock and roll football yeah. and clock but you've got to as long as those three things yes every fan should expect attack entertainment and goals but that's every fan I in would, general yeah, exactly yeah. i will never get on to any united fan doing that but in terms of you want it how Fergie did it? Yeah. I'm we, sorry, guys. Can we guys, not pretend like Fergie go. didn't have a bit of a pragmatic side he to him did, as well, too? I bro. react like Fergie every game was 4-0, 5-0, like bro. Beckham and Giggs flying down the wings. Bro, there's games. Hey, Park Ji-sung, yo, bro, go up here alone. Fergie loved <laughs> throwing a Fletcher into the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fergie, bro, Fergie in big games was pragmatic. Yeah. It's the reality. Yeah. Fergie in big games, especially away ones, away ones, yeah. he was pragmatic. And his goal was basically, don't lose away from home against, the, don't lose in general against the big yeah. six, beat the rest. Yeah. And that, bro, that's how I want it to be. Don't get twisted. I want to see, especially at home, Man United, under Amram's perfect team, I want to see us take it to mm. these bigger teams. I, I, I just want to, I just want United to game, stop. I just want United to, to beat everyone yeah, else. I just want United to stop. For me, because I was going to ask you this. What's the, 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 the three things you want to see come out of Emirates tenure? Mm-hmm. For me, one of the biggest things, we have to stop going to big away grounds and mm-hmm. like immediately knowing we're beat before a ball is kicked. Oh, 100%. That, for me, is the biggest thing now. I think under Ten Hag, the stat was they won one away game against the, the top nine. Forget about the, the yeah. big six. It was against Aston Villa last season. That has to be something that we need to add. I'm not saying fear because that's going to come with results and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but... The mentality that we have going into these games, whether it's the players or even as fans, mm. like, oh, we can get something from this yeah, game, man. 100%. I'm going into this game with confidence. And I don't think United has had that for a long time now. Mm. The, um, three, the, the three, three things, things I would say. Yeah, three things that you want to see come out of the MRM era. Identity. That's number one. Yeah. And identity. Results. Yeah, I want my United to be feared again. That's two. Like, that fear factor has to return to Manchester United. I want Amarim to bring that. And three is youth, man. Don't stop the youth team. Don't stop the youth team. Carrington has a good good pool of youth players, young talent. Remain. Keep keep that into the, into the, into the club. You know what I mean? Keep instilling that into the club. And that's the most important. If you have identity and you have results and fear factor, you're, you've done your job. Youth. I'm just asking, as somebody that's a Man United fan, that's what our club is built on. Yeah, yeah. It has to continue. Do you know what I mean? Who's going to be yours? Like every single manager, right? And let's and like, we can go through it. Other than no, even David Moyes, Yanizai, yeah, yeah. LVG, Rashford. Rashford. Forget Martial because he wasn't yeah. Carrington. Mar- um, Martial, he tried to all black it in yeah, that, yeah. but let's say Rashford, right? Yeah. Jose, Jose McTominay, McTominay yeah, yeah. Um, Oli yeah, yeah. was um, it's supposed to be Greenwood. Was Mason yeah, Greenwood? Yeah, yeah. Rangnick was Elanga. Let's not even forget that. Tenag was Ganacho and Kobe. Remember him. Who's going to be your, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is my young player. He's going to look at Harry Amass. He's going to be like my, yeah. like my left wing back. Yeah, it could be. Harry Amass, there's Ethan Ennis, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's um, um, we, we uh, there's the youngster, I forgot his name. Fitzgerald what, or whatever his name no, is. No, not Fitzgerald, he's a, he's a winger. Um, Mandito, Mandito, I believe it is. <laughs> There's a few, yeah, there's a few, there's a few. We've got some young players in our academy, yeah, that can work, man. So I want to see who, mm. that, I'm actually really interested to see who he says is my young guy. There's always one. And just uh, before we go, an ode to, to Rude. Oh, hey, you ever seen a thug cry? You ever, you ever seen a thug cry? Bruv, when I saw Rude walking out of that dugout, bro. It feels weird, huh? It's a weird feeling. Bro, now I know why them top reds are riding for Oli like this, bro. Because I don't think Oli maybe is even their version because in them times, it would have probably been Skulls or like Keane Beckham, or bro. Bex. Oli is just that lovely guy that was at the club and obviously yeah, gave winner, us a yeah, great yeah. moment. The great, arguably the greatest moment in our history. But Rude Van Nistra, if that 
bro, when when he brought me to this club, he made me support this football team. Yeah, <laughs> seeing him manage the football team, nah, man, it was something special, honestly, bro. And the fact that we were scoring, seeing him so happy on touchdown, bro, he didn't sit down once. Nah, he just went Casemiro scored the goal. Yeah. <sighs> bruv it just was so so nice and i'm not gonna lie i wanted it to be one and done so you can have a hundred percent you're record. worried about chelsea <laughs> i think we can beat chelsea to be fair we're, i think we're gonna vibes our way through but Car- you remember carrick when he was here he drew the chelsea yeah, and beat arsenal yes exactly so i think it's possible don't get it twisted three winnable games that chelsea's gonna be hard obviously but then it's panathinaikos at home mm. and it's leicester at home so not panathinaikos three- p-a-o-k i think P- it is pal are they not pal- the same P-A-A, team yeah not different yeah, there's... Yeah. They're not the same team? No, they're not the same team, bro. Pauk, I thought that's just Pauk, a short name for nah, them. Nah, nah, Pauk were like black and white. Panathinaikos are green. I never the knew more that. You know, the more you know. I never, <laughs> ever knew yeah, you that. Know that. Come Actually, on. Panathinaikos just played thingy in the... Panathinaikos are the ones the that were green. Yeah, they, they were just green. Played thingy. Pauk were I like black and white. I have play a game, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah... Um, Pauk is where Chupa Akpom, I think he went. I think he was, oh, I think he was out oh, there. Oh, no, I thought he went Panathinaikos, bro. I think I think Akpom went Pauk, man. See, uh, Martial scoring for AEK. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, damn, <laughs> 28 years old. <laughs> I was like, wow. Uh, but I now, know. honestly, Rude Van Nistre, man. Guys, sit there right now. If you're still here in this episode. Yeah, he played for Pauk. Pauk, yeah. If you're still here, people, sit there and think about the favorite, your favorite player to ever play for your football club. And he manages the team for me, it would be on Rooney. a short term For me, it would, be, it would be Rooney if he came to United. Imagine Honestly, Rooney. for me, no. But like, even me, I always tell you, I started 06. So I didn't yeah, see yeah, Dennis yeah. United. Yeah. But still, like, I've seen all his goals. I've seen clips. Yeah. I know how much he... And then when I saw him, I was like, this is so weird, bro. This is like, crazy, This bro. is insane, bro. Honestly, Honestly yeah. with the I short know. hair now, too. Like, oh, it, it looks like a different person, but it's the same guy. I like, know, right? I know. It's and so it's Rude different. Van Nistor. And you know what it is? I never, ever thought Rude Van Nistor would come back to United because of the way it ended and like... There's he he's, he's, he's almost a little forgotten at times too because of what's come come after him with Ronaldo mm. and Rooney and stuff like that. And it's like, damn, you're back on the on the touchline as Man United man. Like, did you ever think in your life Rude Van Nistor would be managing a game for Manchester bro, United? Never, That's weird, bro. Never, like, bro. You remember, bro, you remember how I celebrate when he became assistant? Yeah, yeah. Let alone the fact that he's actually managed. Honestly, I I I, just, I did my TikTok about it, and so many fans are, are relating. They're just like, nah, so it was different. It's different. Like, guys, you don't understand, yeah. This guy, I think, let me think. Other than Van Persie, I don't think someone's become a cult hero so quickly. Like Van, no. like uh, Van Nistelrooy. No, he came into a season, scored 30 goals first season, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Instantly, he just became like a Carrington boy. Like he came from Carrington. It's like, he just became a Man United guy. Same with Van Persie. I think yeah. Van Persie is very similar. Van Persie is the title too. Yeah, like, title. Yeah, the manner in which he yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar, but like, that's why that 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 stuff with Fergie's forgotten, bro. Yeah. You, if you're a Man United fan, yeah. you can't talk shit about Van Nistelrooy. Yeah, yeah, He's right. in that bubble of untouchables, in yeah, my yeah. opinion. You can't talk shit about him, bro. Yeah. You can't. But that's how I see it, bro. Can't. What an episode! Long one for you guys this week. Uh, good to have you back. Please yes. focus on work now. No more holidays, right? I, I think you've booked enough. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying no to go more, to Toronto, no man. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's see, though, man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been the eye test. Your boy, Lies, my guy, Culture Cams. Like, share, subscribe. Shout out to BR for powering this on X, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, and TikTok. Follow and us, man. Follow week. us on all platforms. Yeah, follow man. us on all platforms. All Twitch, platforms. TikTok. We got a TikToker now, bro. Yeah, man. I'm walking to Cam's Listen, room. I'm about today. to do a TikTok. He's going right da- to be dancing in his <laughs> room, lip syncing to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. and for all the old heads on, on on twitter who keep showing us love man hey aye. keep going bro <laughs> love y'all man love y'all love y'all love y'all we'll catch you next week peace <laughs> uh.